Today we are exploring the floating city of Venice, where canals replace roads and boats are the primary mode of transportation. We wind our way through the waterways, taking in some of the most iconic landmarks and enjoying some classic Italian food. After arriving by overnight train and taking a day to get acquainted with the city, we set out early the next morning to beat the crowds and cram in as many sights as possible. We've left our hotel and it's just after 7 a.m. Walking through the streets this morning to get to St. Mark's Square is a completely different experience than when we walked here yesterday around 2 p.m. And the streets were just so packed and it took forever to get anywhere. And I feel like we're making pretty good time this morning. Ooh, just got a glimpse of the Rialto Bridge. We're gonna come back and see that after we do the square. St. Mark's Square, or Piazza San Marco, has been the cultural center and heart of the city for centuries. St. Mark's Basilica, Doge's Palace, Bell Tower, and the Clock Tower are all part of the square. Feeding pigeons used to be an activity that was really popular in the square, but it's been discouraged in recent years because of the damage all the birds are causing. This right here is Doge's Palace. It serves as the official residence of the Doge of Venice, the city's highest authority, and as the center of government for the Venetian Republic. So what's interesting about these two columns, one of them has a person on top of a crocodile, I can't remember who the person is, and the other one is a winged lion. But there was actually supposed to be three columns, but one of them fell off the boat while they were being transported and it was never found. So now there's just two. So another thing I didn't know about St. Mark's Square is that it was actually designated the UNESCO World Heritage Site. That was in 1987. This is the bell tower, or as they call it, the Campanile. And you can actually climb all the way to the top. And apparently the views are pretty incredible, which I can imagine. For ever since I climbed uh, St. Stephen's Cathedral in Vienna a couple days ago, I can barely walk, let, let alone climb up. So maybe we'll have to just save that for next time. The square is basically dead compared to when we were here yesterday afternoon. Yesterday you could barely move through the crowds and today there's hardly any people and it's wonderful. Unfortunately, St. Mark's Square is currently under some pretty heavy construction at the moment. So it kind of uh, obscures the main view of the entire square, but I think we'll just walk to the other side of this and see if we can get an unobstructed view. As a tourist myself, I don't like to complain about there being lots of tourists in the spot. I definitely think it's worth getting up early to get here before there's a bunch of people because you really can just stop and take it all in. And you know, if you really like to take photo or video, there's hardly anybody here. It's really the perfect time to come. So you're both aware that St. Mark's Square floods every year. Didn't know that it was normally the fall and winter months, starting in October. And I mean, it is October 7th, but no water yet. I guess they set up a bunch of wooden platforms for people to walk across, like little bridges, when it does flood so people can still use the square. So they actually have all the wooden platforms out and ready to set up whenever the tide starts rolling in. There are four bridges that go across the Grand Canal, which is the main canal that snakes through the city of Venice. And the Rialto Bridge is the oldest and most famous of all four. There was actually a design competition in 1588, and that's how they decided on the design that was to become the Rialto Bridge. crossing the bridge you can either go on one of the outside paths or you can walk down through the middle where there's a bunch of little shops and you can buy all kinds of things like masks, jewelry and Murano glass. 
we just finished crossing over the Rialto Bridge and decided it was time to get something to eat for breakfast. So we stopped at this place called the Brunch Cafe. It's actually really cute in here and they've got a pretty extensive menu. We both got cappuccinos and they actually had oat milk, which was great. You notice most places seem to actually have oat milk or soy milk or some other milk alternative, which has been really convenient for me. And then I also got a bacon French toast and it's supposed to come with maple syrup and Dave Fogg's omelet. So we finished up breakfast. It came to just under 40 euros, which is around $60 Canadian, which kind of hurt me a little bit, but Dave says it's just all part of being in Venice. Everything's just expensive. Interesting thing we did note on the receipt is that it costs $1.80 per person just to be there, just to have a table and sit to eat your meal. You just have to pay a cover charge regardless of how much food you're ordering. That's just what it is. just made our way to the Rialto market and we're just wandering around and checking out all the local produce. The Rialto market is the most historic and famous of the markets here in Venice. The market is divided up into two different sections. One is where all the fruits and vegetables and fresh produce are and the other part has all the fish. All of these bunches of peppers really make me want to buy them and just display them in a vase. They're just so pretty. The market is open every day from 7.30 a.m. until 3 p.m. except Sunday when it's closed. It is a pretty small market, but what's nice is that it's right on the Grand Canal, so it's just got great views and just kind of a great ambiance as you're wandering around. We just purchased some strawberries from the market so that we could break a $50 bill because it's uh, 2 euro to take the traghetto. It can cost upwards of 100 euros, if not more, for a short gondola ride around the canals of Venice. But if you just want to have the experience of being on a gondola without the price tag, then you can pay the 2 euro for the tourist price to get a traghetto. It's basically the same thing. It's a gondola. But instead of just having it private for a 15, 30 minute ride, they just take you right across the Grand Canal from one side to the other in areas where there isn't a bridge. So we just had a minute long gondola ride with five, six other people. It was fun and I think it was worth doing it for the two euro because I personally would not pay what they're asking for an actual gondola ride. It also cut out so much walking if we had to go around because again, there's only four bridges that cross over the canal. So if you're not near one, you're doing quite a walk out of the way in order to find one to get across. So this cut off, what, at least 20 minutes of walking. We're like a couple of minutes from our hotel now. Super convenient, it was great. We decided it was time for another meal and head over to a highly rated crepe shop. We both got the turkey and mozzarella crepe and it also had tomatoes and arugula on it. Overall, it was very tasty and so quick and just really easy to grab and go for something to eat as you're just walking around the streets. And they were 7.50 euro each, so also a really great value. Right now, we're heading to a bookstore called the Libreria Aqua Alta. The fun thing about this bookstore is that because of all the flooding that happens in Venice, a lot of the books are either in like bathtubs or on like, little boats up off the ground inside the bookstore. And there's also supposed to be quite a few resident cats, so <laughs> might be the highlight of Venice. <laughs> This was the only cat we could find. All right, it was a pretty neat little bookstore, but uh, yeah, no cats. <laughs> Apparently the bookstore also no longer floods, but they still kept up with uh, the flooding motif of keeping everything uh, up off the ground for the most part and in a bunch of boats and bathtubs and stuff like that. We spent the rest of this day in Venice wandering along the canals and eating. The pizza from Pizza di Zorma was incredible and we highly recommend a visit. We then capped off the day with some famous gelato and an iconic view of the Bridge of Sighs. 
In our next video, we will be taking a day trip to visit two other islands in Venice, Murano and Burano, that you won't want to miss.